Hi guys, it's me again. So last time I showed you how to import a 3D model from Blender into HitFilm, but I didn't go into the texturing because the Android model I used uh, didn't need any texturing, it just had a plain material. So today I will import an iPhone model, which I found on the Video Copilot uh, website. I will put a link in the description to that if I find it again, I hope. Um, so this is the folder I got from the uh, iPhone uh, 5.zip file, which you can download at the Video Copilot net website. And there we have the OBJ file, which we are going to import, an MTL file and several textures. And I'm going to show you what they do just in a second. So jump into HitFilm and we're going to import the model, iPhone 5.obj, name that. And you can see this already has all the textures and everything set up like it should be. So uh, now this is um, because there is an .mtm file in the uh, folder which contains uh, the material information. So we have two uh, different materials here, one for the outside case of the iPhone and one for the screen and those contain um, the texture for the iPhone and uh, the material data that you can see here. So just that all the materials are set up doesn't mean this looks really good um, so especially the back you can see is uh, quite plain and there are no reflections and so on like there should be. Um, I'm going to refine that but I will do this in a second tutorial I'm recording after this. Uh, for now just uh, keep it at this, uh, we are only having a look at the textures. So um, you could exchange the texture here, so for example if you have had a second uh, diffuse texture here with for example a white iPhone, uh, you can could swap that out by clicking those three dots here and selecting the other um, texture. So what if this MTL file didn't exist? Um, let's pretend to the OS that it doesn't exist by just creating a new folder and putting the MTL file in there. And let's try to import the model again. Opening .obj. And now you can see the MTL, the MTL file is gone. It can find it. So this is just the plain model with the default material, as you can see here, which is applied to every surface of the model. And now you could just go into the diffuse texture file name and locate the texture you have, iPhone 5 underscore diffuse. Open it and there you have it. At least for the main part of the model, this texture is now working. Um, we have a little problem here. This is because um, the screen actually has a separate texture, as you could see before, um, which is this image. And HitFilm doesn't allow us to create new textures and assign them to um, different surfaces, so uh, this would not work in this case, but in uh, models which only have one texture, um, this would work if the model is uh, correctly unwrapped before in the 3D editing program, because the unwrapped data is stored in the OBJ file, actually. So I have another example here. Uh, I don't only got the iPhone 5 model, but I also got a Halloween pack from the Video Copilot website, and uh, there we have a lot of OBJ files and um, they don't have their textures in the same folder as they are. They have it here in the Halloween pack maps folder. And um, I'm quickly going to show you how to rip this off. Um, we're going to hit film again and open the 3D model. Locate them in the Halloween pack. For example, let's just take the jackevil.obj. And now again we have uh, just uh, a plain white model because it didn't find the um, textures at default because there is no MTL file. And so we will have to set up these materials manually. So diffuse texture file name, find that. Uh, oops, wrong folder. Halloween pack, Halloween pack, Halloween pack maps. Find the texture that's uh, the right one for the Jack Evil. There we have it, Jack Evil underscore diffuse dot JPEG. And you can see this already looks quite good. Um, now again, this doesn't look very realistic, but we will cover that in the second tutorial I mentioned before. Okay, so I've decided not to do a second tutorial because I noticed that this tutorial isn't that long still, so I'll just do it in this video too. So I promised to make the iPhone 5 file look better, and uh, the way I'm going to do this is by using a specular map. You might have noticed that in the iPhone 5 folder there's a second uh, texture that's called iPhone5 underscore specular.png. 
And if you open it, you can see this is just a black and white image and this will define which parts of the model are reflective so uh, and how much they are reflective. So if we just import the iPhone 5 model again, you can see uh, so everything is set up and uh, I told you that the back is quite plain and you can see that in the specular map the back is not that plain you can see this is the back here although it is mirrored I think um, the upper and lower parts where the iPhone consists of glass are uh, light gray color which may which will make them uh, more reflective than the rest of the back uh, which is I think some sort of brushed metal or so on the actual iPhone and the Apple and the iPhone fonts here are also going to be uh, more reflective than the rest of the back same is the case with uh, the outlines of the model where there is uh, this metal this metal band around the iPhone and some parts of the camera as well. So in the 3D model properties under the materials tab um, there is a second slot for a texture which is called specular texture file name and we're going to open that and you see it has absolutely no effect and that is because uh, the specular texture um, defines which parts of the model models are affected by the specular color and the shininess and because the specular color is set to black at the moment uh, it won't show anything so let's just raise this up to white and you can see now we have an effect the upper and lower parts as well as the apple and the iphone font are reflective so is the screen and the edges of the model as you can see here with this highlight and now we can adjust these uh, just by raising or lowering the shininess. Uh, let's set this back to 40. And yeah, now we have a model that's properly reflective like the real one would be. One thing to notice is that uh, this doesn't affect the specular reflectivity. Um, this just uh, defines the overall spec um, reflectivity of the model. So here now the model's back is again totally uh, reflective, which is something I think the FX Home developers could um, look into because um, having specular reflections uh, of the environment uh, mapped to the specular texture would actually be kind of handy. So let's turn this down again and you might have noticed one thing uh, that the screen actually, not the front of the model but just the screen, is not reflective, although in the specular map you can see the front of the screen should totally be reflective. Now this is because um, you can see that uh, the orange underscore o one uh, material is only applied to these uh, to the other case of the um, iPhone and we have a second material here that is uh, the screen um, which uh, defines uh, the screen area. Uh, there we have the second texture in and to get this one reflective um, we just uh, up the specular color in here and as the screen is uh, doesn't have any areas that are separately um, reflective uh, independent to each other we can just uh, leave the specular texture file in blank so the whole screen will be uh, reflective at once so maybe as the screen is emitting life itself it is not that good to have it purely white reflections but maybe to a gray something uh, a little less still like this so that you can still see the screen most of the time well that's it again for today hope you learned something please like and subscribe and if you have any questions leave them in the comments i'll be happy to answer them until next time bye